little behind, but coming up now, I know I've been waiting for her. I love Greta Christina, author, blogger, damn great interviewer, and um, a friend of mine. Oh, anytime. Uh, what author, blogger, damn great interviewer, friend of mine, and um, delightful presenter. Greta, thank you for being with us tonight. And after she reads, there's a book signing. So there we go. Coming out atheist. Take it away, Greta. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much. And whoever decided to put me on to follow that act, bite me. <laughs> um, OK, thanks. Uh, so I'm Greta Christina, and I'm author of Greta Christina's blog and of Why Are You Atheists So Angry? 99 Things That Piss Off the Godless, but I'm also author of a new book uh, that's a book that I think our community has desperately needed for years. It's the reason I wrote it. It's called Coming Out Atheist, How to Do It, How to Help Each Other, and Why, and that's what I'm talking about today. Um, so I think we're all agreed that coming out is one of the most powerful political acts that atheists can take. You know, maybe the most powerful act. You know, coming out is how we make our lives better. Overwhelmingly, atheists who have come out say that they're happier now and that they're glad they did it. Uh, coming out is how we change the world's perceptions of us and how we counter the bigotry against us. Coming out is how we find each other and how we create these magnificent communities that make a safe place to land for other atheists who are coming out. Coming out is how we refuse the social consent that religion relies on to perpetuate itself. And coming out is how we are going to forge ourselves into a voting block and a political force to be reckoned with. I have limited time today, so I'm, I'm going to assume that we're all on board with that, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time making that case. Coming out, yay! Um, at the same time, I think we all understand that coming out as an atheist can be difficult. Uh, it can have emotional consequences, and it can have practical consequences. So we need to do more than just keep telling each other, come out, come out, come out. We need to create and circulate specific strategies for coming out and for supporting each other in coming out. And that's what I'm talking about today. Now, this is obviously a very large topic. It's why I wrote an entire book about it as opposed to, say, a pamphlet. Um, and I based that book on over 400 coming out atheist stories that I gathered you know, to do the research for it. And the book actually includes many of these atheist stories in their own words, as well as my analysis of them. And the book has guidance on coming out to family, uh, to friends, spouses, partners, strangers at the airport, um, coming out if you're a parent, if you're a student, if you live in a conservative community, a progressive community, uh, if you're a member of another marginalized group, and lots of other specific circumstances, because coming out is different for everybody. Um, and I actually have an entire section in the book on how to support each other in coming out. For those of us who are more out, who are pretty out most of the time, for those of us who have atheism on our blog right at the top, um, you know, and how we can support each other. Um, again, it's a large topic. I can't possibly take on all of it today. So I'm just going to touch on a few of the most basic guidelines. And I'm going to share some of my favorite stories uh, from the book. And I'm going to wind up talking about how we can help each other come out. So, now that you've come to this talk on how to come out as an atheist, I have a confession to make. I can't tell you how to come out as an atheist. No. I, I can't tell you how to come out as an atheist in a way that will make it happen perfectly every time for every atheist. The reality is that coming out can be difficult. It isn't always, but it can be. And nothing I say is going to make that not be true. Um, and again, coming out atheist is different for everyone. In fact, when I first started working on the book, I originally envisioned it as like a clear set of directions like you get from your phone, you know, turn left, turn right, whatever. If A happens, then B, and if C happens, then D, and if your grandmother starts to cry, then turn left on Main Street. Um, but when I really started getting into the research, it became very clear that our experiences are much too varied for anything like that to work. And so the book is not a set of directions. It's more like a map of the territory with some ideas on how you can best choose the way that works for you. I can't tell you, here's the right way to come out. There is no right way to come out as an atheist. 
But there are a few guidelines that seem to apply to most people who are coming out as atheists, and so I want to talk about those. Uh, just so you know, I don't have time today to get into all of the basics that I cover in the book. This is just a sampling of a few of the high points, and I'm just going to touch on each one briefly. One, coming out is a spectrum and a process. Coming out is not a single step that we take once and are then done with. You know, we tend to talk about coming out atheist as like an either or thing. Either we're out of the closet or we're in the closet. But coming out is an ongoing process. It's, it's a series of decisions we make every day. You know, each time you come out to a different person, it's a different coming out moment. And plus, with some people, you may have to come out more than once if they don't believe you the first time around or if they don't accept it. And even after you've come out to all the central people in your life, coming out is still an ongoing series of choices that we make every day. Do you chat about your atheism at the basketball game where people behind you can hear you? Uh, do you wear an atheist t-shirt to the airport? Do you cross in God we trust off the money? And if you do, do you do it right there in front of the store clerk or do you wait till you get home to do it? Uh, when somebody asks you, what church do you belong to? Do you say something vague like, oh, I haven't decided yet? Or do you say something a little more specific like, oh, I'm not really religious? Or do you just flatly say, I don't go to church, I'm an atheist? So being an out atheist is not an either or thing, it's a continuum. And we all get to make our own choices about where to be on that continuum. I mean, I, for instance, I'm about as out an atheist you can be. You know, I've written atheist books with my name on it. My blog has the word atheism on it. But I don't always tell strangers in the airport that I'm an atheist. You know, I don't always want to have that conversation for five hours on the airplane. Um, and I'm not going to beat myself up over that. Okay, number two, give the people you're coming out to some credit. When I first started researching this book, I'd expected to find a deluge of tragedies, you know, stories of shattered families, broken friendships, ruptured marriages, and I did read those stories. I read too many of them. I mean, any is too many. But one of the things that really surprised me when I was researching this book and reading the hundreds of coming out stories that I read for it was that these really tragic stories were the exception. They were not the rule. Most coming out atheist stories that I've read and heard have turned out okay. You know, the atheists who have come out are mostly on good terms with their families. They mostly get along with their coworkers. They've mostly kept most of their friends. Now, it often took time, you know, and they sometimes went through fights and tears and long conversations. But as a rule, it eventually worked out okay. And a lot of the time, the process didn't involve any fights or tears and didn't really take that much time and wasn't nearly as bad as people expected it to be. So I want to inject a couple of stories here from the book because other atheists who I quote in the book, sometimes they tell these stories much better than I can. Um, here's what Midori says. Over the past few months, I've come out to my brother and his wife as queer, trans, and atheist. It seems like I am always coming out as something their reaction is usually something along the lines of, we love you and support you no matter what, and if you need anything, just let us know. They're awesome like that. Um, in her interview for the Ebony Exodus Project, Why Some Black Women Are Walking Out on Religion and Others Should Too, by Candace R.M. Gorham, by the way, awesome book, everybody has to read it. Um, Janet says, when I told my grandmother that I didn't believe, she said she loved me no matter what. And Bubba707, I love online handles, um, Bubba707, who lives in a conservative, mostly Catholic, small town in Wisconsin, says it's just not a real subject of conversation. The closest to it was a while after my dad's funeral, an aunt asked me if I was religious at all, and I told her no, not at all. Nothing more was said, and we still get along fine. So give the people who care about you some credit. Don't assume that their religion will trump their relationship with you. Sometimes it will, and you should be prepared for that, but most of the time it won't. Number three, in general, sooner is better. If it's at all possible, it is generally better to come out sooner rather than later. The sooner you come out, the more likely it is that you'll be able to pick the time and place. The less likely it is that someone else will out you, uh, that someone will force the issue and not let you dodge it, or that a crisis will make it necessary for you to come out right away in the middle of the crisis, even though the timing is lousy. 
And if you come out sooner, people will have more time to get comfortable with the idea, and that means you'll have more time with them to have an honest relationship. Now, there are obvious exceptions. If you're in a situation where coming out atheist could really seriously screw up your life, you know, like if you're a college student uh, whose parents might cut off your tuition because of your atheism, then yes, absolutely hold off for now. But in general, if you can do it safely, sooner is better. Number four, have patience and be the bigger person. So I said earlier that coming out is a process, but it's not just a process for you. It's often a process for the people that you're coming out to. It can take time for them to get used to it. One of the most important lessons about coming out and one of the most difficult is patience. Now, as atheist activists and in our public life, I think it is fine to demand justice and acceptance right now. In fact, I think it's more than fine. I think it is essential. If we wait until people accept us before we speak up and fight for our rights, we're going to wait forever. Speaking up and fighting for our rights is what's going to get us acceptance. Um, but, but in your personal life, with people you care about and are in it with for the long haul, you probably want to, you know, be in it with them for the long haul. You don't have to be a doormat, and I'm going to get to that in a moment, but you do need to understand that this process often takes time. And sometimes you have to be the bigger person. When you come out as an atheist, people will sometimes be, okay, how shall I put this delicately? Total fucking assholes. They may be bigoted, manipulative, guilt-tripping, cruel. It won't help if you're an asshole back. If you want relationships with these people, you need to be willing to be the bigger person. Remember that you care about these people and keep your eye on that bigger picture. On the other hand, it is also a very good idea to, number five, decide how much shit you're really willing to take. The reality is that you're probably going to deal with at least some anti-atheist hostility and bigotry. And you know what? That's true whether you come out or not. It's all around us. But when you come out, you get to decide how to respond. It's actually one of the best things about coming out. If you're in the closet and people are bigots, you don't get to decide how to respond. If you're out, you get to decide when to let it slide and when to kind of gently say, hey, I'm an atheist and that's really not true or fair and when to just flatly say, screw you, I'm an atheist, and that is some totally bigoted bullshit. And you get to decide who you're willing to be patient with and who you're not. Um, so here's another story from the book. Again, people in this book uh, tell the stories and a lot of times much better than I can. It's a great example of how to do this. Uh, when Terry Garrett came out as an atheist to her fundamentalist family, she had some very upsetting conversations with them, and she eventually had to set some firm limits. The most important rule, she says, was to insist upon a calm and fair discussion place. This means that I refuse to allow tempers in the conversation. The instant that siblings would start to flip their shit, I'd say, I love you too much to have this conversation in anger, and I would physically leave the room, effectively enforcing my no yelling rule. And she then goes on to say, I also learned, after being far too patient with siblings, to stop allowing it to be a one-way conversation. If they insist I read a certain book or watch a DVD, I would only agree if they would be willing to watch one of mine. If they pushed me to answer a series of questions, I'd be fine with that, as long as I was free to ask them questions in return. This little aspect I should have instituted from the start. It would have saved me rereading a lot of circular crap from C.S. Lewis. So there's a difference between being patient and being a doormat. You may have to be patient with ignorance and give people time to change their minds, but you don't have to put up with insults, hatred, bigotry, or abuse. You can be the bigger person while still drawing clear boundaries about what you're willing to deal with. Number six, have your practical and financial ducks in a row within reason. And as positive as coming out generally is, the reality is that it can create real practical problems. It doesn't always, but it can. So have your practical and financial ducks in a row first, as much as you can. If you're coming out atheist at work and it might endanger your job, 
make sure you can cope with that financially. You know, maybe have a plan B, have your resume in place. If you can, have a couple months' salary in, in your savings. Um, if you're in a conservative religious community and coming out might isolate you, uh, find an atheist community first and put down roots in it so you won't be isolated. Uh, if you're a college student and your parents are supporting you, you might wait to come out to them until you're out of college. Now, there are some serious and very obvious limits to this advice. Coming out means accepting some risk. If you wait to come out until everything is perfectly safe and is completely risk-free, you're going to wait a very long time. But it's important to remember that staying in the closet has risks as well. And for one thing, the longer you wait to come out, the greater your chance is by, of being outed by somebody else. I mean, either maliciously because they want to screw with you out of concern of your non-existent soul, or just because they hit the wrong damn key on their computer and they hit reply all. Um, also, the longer you wait to come out, the greater your chances of accidentally outing yourself. I've seen those stories, you know, the person who hit reply all on their own email when, and they accidentally told people that they didn't mean to tell. Um, and it's much, much better to come out voluntarily and on your own time and your own terms than to be outed against your will. And what's more, staying in the closet doesn't just involve the risk of being outed. It involves the risk and the stress of living a lie. And that can do real damage. So when you're doing your cost-benefit analysis about coming out versus staying in, remember, neither choice is risk-free. Uh, and finally, before we move on to helping each other, finally, number seven, remember that it's not always that big a deal. I mean, so far I've mostly been focusing here on the difficulties, but there's a flip side that's really important to remember. Sometimes coming out atheist isn't as traumatic as we fear. In fact, often it isn't as traumatic as we fear. I cannot tell you how many coming out stories I've read that ended with, it really wasn't that bad. I thought it was gonna be a nightmare and it was actually fine. And often the reaction is more in the middle. It's like, no, they, they really didn't love it, and it was kind of a hard conversation, but they got over it sooner than I thought, and now things are basically fine. And in fact, in the hundreds of coming out atheist stories that I read for this book, literally one person said that they regretted having done it. One person. And sometimes when atheists come out, the reaction isn't just, oh, that's fine, you know, we love you and accept you the way you are. Sometimes when atheists come out, the reaction is me too. I mean, I have heard this story from so many atheists, I cannot even tell you. They tell the people in their life that they're an atheist, and the response is ecstatic relief. They don't believe in God either, and they've been in the closet, and they've been scared to tell us. In fact, I want to do a show of hands here. How many people have had that happen? How many people here have come out to somebody as an atheist and had the person that you're coming out to say, me too? Look around, that's not a trivial number. This happens a fair amount. Now, you know the people you're coming out to better than I do, and you know better than I do whether it's likely to be a difficult conversation or an easy one. I'm just saying, don't go into the conversation with a giant thundercloud over your head of expecting gloom and doom. They may react better than you think. Okay, so I wanna shift gears now. We've been talking here mostly about how we ourselves can come out. And I wanna ask a different question. How can we support each other in coming out? For those of us who are mostly out, how can we help other people get there? And how do we make atheism a safer place to come out into? Again, large topic, the book has an entire section about this, I just have time to touch on a few of the main high points. The number one thing we can do to help other atheists come out is simply to do it ourselves. When we come out, other people will see it, feel safer coming out. And then they make the next wave of people feel safer, and so on and so on. It's actually one of the best things about coming out atheists, it has a snowball effect. So if you want to help other atheists come out, one of the best things you can do is to come out yourself as much as you can. Take one more step out than you already are. Again, if that's safe for you. Forming communities is absolutely one of the most important things we can do to help people come out. I mean, the reasons people stay in religion often have very little to do with the religious beliefs themselves. It has to do with community. 
And so we need to provide communities that give what religion gives, you know, safety nets, uh, guidance and counseling, uh, places for ritual and, and rites of passage, daycare, activities for families, activities for charity and social justice work, companionship, continuity, all these things that people get from religion we need to provide. And if we're asking atheists to come out, we're kind of asking them a lot. We're asking them to let go of a lot of support and we need to give them a safe place to land. Now, a lot of us are doing this, that it, we're doing it more and more all the time, that is awesome, let's keep it up, let's do it better, and let's do it more. It's also really important to remember that coming out is easier for some than it is for others. So when we're encouraging each other to come out, we need to make sure that that doesn't turn into judgment or pressure or guilt tripping. You know, coming out is different for everybody. People have different circumstances and different personalities. And we have to support people in doing it on their own timetable and in their own way and not judge people as being somehow fraidy cats because they're not as out as we are. And speaking of differences between us, um, I have a huge amount to say about diversity in our community, uh, gender diversity, racial diversity, diversity of economic class, educational backgrounds, what religion people are leaving and so on, is a huge topic, it's a hugely important topic. I, don't have time to do it justice to say. I actually have a whole talk that I give on this. I promise I'm not going to give you that whole talk now. Um, this is just a two-minute drill of my diversity talk. And the main thing I want to say is this. If we care about broadening our horizons, if we care about making organized atheism more welcoming to more people and to a wider variety of people than are already participating in it, we have to take conscious, deliberate action to make that happen. I mean, a lack of diversity in a community is a self-perpetuating cycle. We all have unconscious biases that keep these cycles going. And that doesn't make us bad people. What it does mean is that we have the responsibility to be more aware of these unconscious biases. And it means that we have to take conscious action to intervene in them. And if we want to succeed in making atheism more welcoming to more people, we need to be willing to take a hard look at how exactly we're failing to do that. You know, we need to be willing to keep looking at what we could do better and not let ourselves get complacent just because our intentions are good and just because we've done good things in the past. When we fail to do it right and people call us on it, we need to not make our hurt feelings over being called on it a greater priority than the fact that we screwed up in the first place. And we need to be willing to change how we do things sometimes in ways that are inconvenient or uncomfortable. Okay, so that's a two minute drill. <laughs> um, and finally, I mean obviously not finally, finally for today, there's one more hugely important thing that we can do to support each other in coming out. We can tell happy stories about coming out. You know, when we talk about coming out, it's really easy to focus on how difficult it is, and that's totally understandable. And we want to vent and commiserate with people who understand and we want to troubleshoot and problem solve. But, and that's an important side of the story, but it's only one side of the story. You know, if we want to help other atheists come out, I think we need to tell the other side as well. Living an out life is fun. Being out makes you feel liberated. It makes you comfortable in your own skin. <laughs> It makes it easier to find other people to connect with, people who share your values. You know, an honest life, a life where you're not constantly keeping track of who knows which secrets about you and how they could hurt you if they tell, that feels good. It's easier to relax and to have fun and to just be yourself. We can tell happy stories about coming out. So I want to finish up here with just a few more quotes from the book, the ones that really get this point across. So Flora, whose family are intensely conservative Christians in Texas, I'm extremely happy that I did come out to my family. I feel much more honest and open because of it. Like our relationships are built on mutual love and trust instead of on fear and lies. Eric Paulson came out at age 10 when he asked his parents to stop sending him to church. When they agreed to his request, he says, I can't tell you how much better I felt once I knew I was no longer going to be forced to participate in this weekly farce. 
It was truly as if I had been washed clean. Uh, Blaine says of coming out to his parents, they were both more than accepting and didn't seem to care one bit. In her interview for the Ebony Exodus Project, Mendisa says, I've had some of my high school peers actually thank me for saying the things that I do say because they felt the same way. And finally, Daniel Shaler, the anonymous atheism ship has sailed for me and I'm happier for it. I will say one more time before I close, in the hundreds of coming out stories that I read and heard, literally one person said they regretted it. Everybody else said that even if they had a hard time at first, even if they were still having a hard time, even if they did alienate family or friends, they're glad they came out and they're happier now that they've done it. Coming out can be hard, it can be upsetting, it can be a dangerous, it can be really annoying, and it can take time and work, but it can also be awesome. It can be the door to a better life. And if we want to support each other in coming out, one of the best things we can do is to get that message out. Um, so uh, once again, the book is titled Coming Out Atheist, How to Do It, How to Help Each Other and Why. Um, it's available in ebook and audiobook and also here in the conference bookstore. And I will be doing a book signing right after this talk. And I also want to plug Beth Presswood's talk. She's going to be speaking tomorrow at 10.30, also on the topic of coming out. Uh, and she has a really different, some different angles on it than I do. So I really encourage you uh, to listen to her. Thank you all so much.